I think this is going to be the ugliest lure I've ever made. But only if I do it right. We're going for ugly in this video. Uglier the better. We're going to be making that. It was close. Catfish almost won. But anglerfish won by one vote. Quite a few things I need to decide for this bait. It's teeth, the dangly thing, how many joints, the general size and shape. I'm going to draw some stuff out. So there is what I came up with. Not exactly a pretty fish, but it looks like it's going to be doable for sure. I think the hardest thing on this bait is going to be to carve these really skinny teeth. I already know what I'm going to do for the dangly thing in the front. I'm going to use some, uh, you know the leaders with like a nylon coating? You can just buy the wire. I'm going to get some of that stuff and glue it into the face and then make my own little bright dangly thing up here. Oh, and what I thought was really weird about these fish, they have like these like dot patterns that go all along the body. If you see those dots, just adds to the creepiness of this fish. But yeah. I'm going to try to make this look as ugly and scary and weird as possible. This is a one inch thick piece of poplar. From what I've seen, the anglerfish, they're a lot wider towards the mouth and they just kind of taper off. I still have no idea how I'm going to do those teeth, but I'm going to go cut this out. So I've been reading a little bit on these anglerfish. Apparently they're all carnivorous. They all have long fang-like teeth. They angle inward, so they grab onto prey. They all have the illuminescent little bulb thing dangling from their face. Oh, it's illuminescent because of bacteria that developed a symbiotic relationship with a cup-shaped reflector containing crystals in their little dangly thing. That's really strange. So in most of the species, a wide mouth extends all around the circumference of their head. So they got a big mouth. It's able to distend both its jaw and its stomach. They have thin bones that are flexible and they can flex to enormous sizes. It can swallow prey twice its size. I always thought of them as like the bigger fish that dangles the little thing that attracts the little fish and it eats it. But no, even if something's in front of it that's like twice its size looking at its little shiny thing. Weird fish. It's always good to find a little bit out about a species before you try to make one. I guess.
So it's looking like for the teeth that I'm gonna have to carve them out of the wood that's already here. So I hollowed out the mouth and I'm gonna come back in with an even sharper and deeper cutting bit, this one, and try to get behind the teeth. That way it's just like a solid flat row and then I can carve the teeth out of that. I've never done anything like this before so I'm hoping it's gonna turn out good. It's not easy to show you guys, but it made a little bit of a lip on the inside, just behind the teeth, or where the teeth will be. Once I get a tooth that's just standing alone like that, I'm definitely going to have to put some super glue on it. Because it's completely unsupported, and it's just a skinny little piece of wood. There's the teeth. I wanted them to look pretty jagged and uneven. They turned out all right. I got some cleaning up to do on them still. Some material to, to remove behind them still. But I ended up using the Dremel quite a bit on that top row. You can see where it was burnt. Not too shabby. I was worried about how I was gonna do these, but turned out pretty simple. I'm having to look at this like in the mirror reverse and line it up correctly. Hurts my brain. I think that's right. You guys hear that cricket? I was just about to put the weight in this bait and I kinda, something hit me. Like this might work really good as a lipless crankbait. It's got the size in the front to catch enough water. It's got this open mouth that's gonna catch even more water. I could put the line tie just right between the eyes on the top. I'm going to make this a lipless crankbait. So what I found that works best when you're trying to weigh a lipless crankbait is you, you want the weight towards the front, but you don't want it like right in the nose. You want it um, like right where I put that dot. And you want to put all the weight in one spot. Uh, this is a half inch bit and it'll go probably a half an inch down. That's like five-eighths of an inch deep. While the lead pot's heating up, I'm just doing some sanding. A lot of the time, these lures, when you're trying to put really fine detail into them, you just gotta sand them forever. I almost forgot to drill the eye sockets. I'm gonna do that really quick. Just gotta wait for that to cool off now. Then I'm gonna cover up that lead hole. So I was just at Costco and my wife bought a 13 pound bag of baking soda. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do the uh, super glue and baking soda trick. I guess it's called a trick. At least that's what they call it on YouTube. You just mix baking soda and super glue and it's supposed to harden instantly. I've never done it before, but I'm gonna see what happens on this bait. Here we go. That's the baking soda. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna apply the glue and then just sprinkle a little bit of baking soda and maybe build it up in layers, I guess.
Uh-oh. Clumpy. That did harden really quick. I'm glad I have this really thin super glue too. Seems like it soaks right through it. I hope this is easy to carve because it's definitely a lot easier than, uh, well, it's not easier, but it's quicker than applying epoxy and uh, having to wait for it to cure. Yeah, that's already hard. That might actually be something I do quite a bit of now. You can see how you can get it kind of built up past where you need it, and then I'll be able to sand it smooth. Yeah, I like that. That dries really hard. It feels like I'm chiseling through aluminum or something. This is a sharp chisel and I can only scrape off a little bit at a time. I'm gonna put some super glue on the threads of all of these screw eyes and screw them in. So before I go any further with the carving on this bait, I'm going to give it a coat of wood sealer and uh, kind of secure all the details that I have on it right now. Then come back tomorrow, touch up any spots that I want to make look better, and I'll probably start painting tomorrow too. So the last thing I'm going to do to this bait before I paint it is uh, kind of just dot these little lines that go along the body. So now I'm going to put some polyurethane on it, probably just one coat. That'll smooth out all the details and have it completely ready for painting. I've already got the first layer of white on this bait. Uh, now I need to figure out what colors this angler fish is gonna have. And from pictures, it seems like there isn't really a set color. I mean, kind of that brown color, tannish brown, pretty dark brown. But some of them are green. Some of them are like this. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Others are kind of orangish too. So I might do a mixture of colors. We'll see. I think first of all, I'm gonna go over some spots with gray to kind of give it some low lights and some highlights. It's a pretty drab and dreary looking fish. Just dark and really there's not much color going on. So now I've got a really thin brown. This is a different kind of airbrush paint that's a lot thinner than the Createx stuff. And I'm gonna go over it really light with the brown. So it's not very realistic or uh, something that you see on these fish, but I think it would look good if I put some iridescent red on it. I, I think the color shift for this stuff, it goes to purple when you turn it a little bit and look at it from a different angle. It's kind of like a pinkish purple. So, I don't know. I think it'll look fine. I'm gonna do it. So now that that's on, I'm kind of realizing uh, what might look good is for the highlights to be kind of gold. And that way it transitions from like gold, maybe like orangish, because some of these are orange, and then into the red. I'm gonna try that. All right, I think that's a good base coat to start with. I'm gonna start putting some detail paint on it now. And it looks like the first thing I need to do is go in with some pearlized white into each of these lines on the fin, and then I'll do the same thing for the dots on the body. You don't have to be super, super accurate with just trying to get the paint in only the lines. You can just kind of glob it on and it, it shows up more in the lines than it does anywhere else.
So now we've got to whiten these teeth. I'm going to try to do just the front. I think that'll make them look more pointy. Haven't done a bait with glass eyes in quite a while. I'm gonna give this angler fish uh, tiny white pupils, and then I'm gonna, the rest of it, the iris is just gonna be pearlized white, which is more of a translucent color. There, you can kinda of see the color shift from gold to red. Looks good. I think it's ready for a clear coat. Stirring up a 30 minute two part epoxy and I put a little bit of denatured alcohol in it just to thin the mixture a little bit. I don't want it to be too thick around the teeth on this bait. It's nice when you got just one bait to clear coat. I used to clear coat like 12 baits at once sometimes and then you always feel rushed when you're doing something like that. But it kind of does make a difference when you can really be careful and get the clear coat everywhere it needs to be and like not push bubbles over things and stuff. I like it. Some of you out there might be really good at clear coating a bunch of baits at once, but I never was. The iridescent red is going crazy now. It's pretty much turning purple on the top. I was going for you know, ugly and scary, but it turned out kind of cute. <laughs> so that just needs to cure. Tomorrow, I'll tie that bait on, see how it swims. Well, ultimately, we'll see if it was a good idea or not to make this a lipless swim or a lipless crankbait instead of a swim bait. These are the kind of things that keep me up at night. I guess I don't have it too bad. Last thing to do with this angler fish. Hey, you. There. There is the finished angler fish as a lipless crankbait. Let's go see how it swims. Oh, we're great. End of the video. The angler fish has got good action. Um, so I'm not going to fish with it in this video. Um, there's going to be a. Oh, Chelsea just caught a fish. Am I interrupting something? There's going to be a completely separate video. I'm going to post it the same day of uh, fishing with the angler fish. But yeah, I'm happy it works good. Made kind of that last second decision to make it a lipless crankbait and it works. On to the next bait. Was it a green sunfish? That doesn't count yet. 